Hi guys, this is Alana Terry. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. We're really, really glad that you've joined us today. I'm here with one of my real life friends, Jennifer Christensen, who is in Anchorage and involved in a lot of prayer ministries and prayer communities around the area. And so we just recently reconnected and I knew I wanted to grab her to talk about what she's been doing. I know a lot of women are craving deeper prayer fellowship and more than you can get kind of at the closing prayer at the end of church. And I feel like Jennifer absolutely has the recipe for this kind of fellowship. So welcome, Jennifer. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. And this is actually take two. We we opened up and I'm like, oh, well, this isn't recording. But <laughs> even though we already did it once, if you've got a sec, I would love to just open up in a word of prayer. Absolutely. God, I thank you for helping Jennifer and me to cross paths again, and we just know that that was totally you, God. I thank you for all the ways that you have been leading her into such a deep and rich prayer community, and I pray a um, tremendous blessing over her and the men and women she prays with, and I pray that that would be having amazing kingdom impact in Anchorage and across Alaska and have worldwide ripples, Lord, and I pray for any women listening who might feel like they're ready to go deeper into prayer communities like this and just ask that you would be preparing just networks and cells across the world of people committed to going deeper in prayer, Lord. And just ask that you would guide our conversation and help it be a blessing and encouragement to all who are listening. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, so tell us a little bit, because I know you mentioned it kind of in passing, some of the things you're involved with, but I would love to know more. Okay, love to share. So the, the three main things that I'm involved with right now, the, the biggest one is a online prayer community called Alaska Prayer Hub. Mm -hmm. And it, it started actually the day before the earthquake in Anchorage. Um, there was a a timing, just a group of women and I that had been meeting and pray, praying and fellowshipping and just really gotten connected to each other on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. uh, I really started to consider them my family because it was, you know, we don't necessarily all go to church together or the same churches, but God just brought us together and, and we were spending more and more time together. So the night before the earthquake, we all were praying about just, what God had. And one of the women that I had gotten connected with had a, a vision, open vision from God about this major shaking that was going to take place. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking that night, you know, she was, the vision was about supernatural shaking as well as um, natural shaking. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking that night, Oh, there's going to be an earthquake. So the next morning I woke up and sure enough. <laughs> yeah, it was a big one. Yeah. Okay. For those of you who, who aren't in Alaska, maybe didn't hear, we had a seven pointer, I guess, right at the very end of November, right? Yep. So a couple months ago now, thankfully no major, major damage. I know some people did have to leave their houses and others are waiting for repairs, but, but there was seven mean, point there were deaths either. I mean, that was yeah. just, miraculous. it could have been so much worse, but it, it was very scary. Yep. It was. So that, that night, actually, um, the group that I had originally prayed with and then some other women, we all got on Facebook chat or Facebook video, mm -hmm. I guess it is, and, and we're praying about this earthquake. And there was just this conviction from the Holy Spirit that we were supposed to develop a prayer community together. Mm -hmm. And right. um, there's a woman named Kristen. She's really behind starting it or really, really hearing from God on that. And so there was kind of seven of us in leadership and, and, or not even leadership, but just seven of us that came together to um, say we wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. And so each of us takes a day to lead and, and prays at night uh, from 807 to 907 every night. And is that because of the area code? Is that why you did the 07? Because yeah. Alaska's yeah. 907. That's so, cool. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm it has dramatically shifted and changed my life. So this is, this is definitely the most intense thing that I'm a part of right now. Mm -hmm. um, just that, that level of praying into our community and our state and for each other and our families and what God's doing, the amount of movement that I've seen in all of our lives and around us is just, I'm blown away. But I think the, the bigger thing is just, 
that that's even possible that there's time for that. Right, right. Because I'm sure that's going to be the first thing on many people's mind as well. That sounds great, Jennifer, but you must have nothing else to do all day, which I know isn't true. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, you know, I can't make it every single night and, mm-hmm. and none of us can so far has been able to make it every single night. And, and I'm not a person that, um, you know, really would have even thought that I could make something like this once a week. But, but when God calls you to something that's bigger than yourself, it's amazing how that, that pulls you that direction. So my encouragement would be if you are craving something deeper and being a part of a group of women that are praying, um, just to even check that out or even to come in once a week or when you're able, um, really, it's just, it's hard not to keep coming back. So, um, so I guess, the, go ahead. I was going to ask just sort of what's the format? This is all on videos, like a Google right. Hangout kind of setting. Yeah, we've been doing it through Facebook video. So mm-hmm. um, it's kind of the same process as um, Google Hangout, but we are switching over actually to Zoom because okay. more, more and more people have been calling in. Mm-hmm. So I think on an average night, you know, it can be eight or nine people. And so Zoom is just a more stable platform. Right. So basically whoever, so one person's in charge for that night of the week mm-hmm. and then whoever else shows up, you're just praying, taking turns, praying like you would at a face-to-face prayer meeting. Exactly. Yeah. And we have people from Soldatna and Delta Junction and Anchorage. Wow. Uh-huh different parts of the state, which has been pretty, pretty amazing. Um, all different church communities, different backgrounds, different ethnic backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Um, I just feel God's blessing on that part in particular as well. Um, that Neat. we've talked about that a bit, that we're just really coming from, from different areas, but each with a harder prayer. And our, our format is that each night is a particular mountain of influence. So, uh-huh. For instance, um, my night, which is Tuesday night, my uh, mountain of influence is business. And then, um, and it doesn't mean we don't have like prayer requests and other things. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But like, for instance, this past week, even though business became the piece that that we entered in on praying for business in our community and and God's um, just raising up more godly people in those areas, it actually quickly turned to sex trafficking. Yeah, because that's that we there's a connection there in, is, yeah. in Anchorage, unfortunately. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I've seen the Holy Spirit do that numerous times where, you know, we just lay it before him what pieces that he wants us to pray for. Um, and it's just it's just been miraculous. So I do feel like I want to jump back to in this last year. I've been a Christian now 15 years and um what I can trace back to the increasing depth of my prayer life Mm -hmm. is uh, last year God um, called me out and um, I do own a business and was spending a good, you know, 50, 60 hours a week running the business as well as being involved in a lot of boards and some Mm -hmm. other um, organizations and things that I was a part of. And the desire of my heart, I kept praying to God, I want more of you in my life. I want more depth. I want more connection with, with other believers. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, what I didn't expect him to answer was that I needed to cut out all these other things out of my life. Right, right. And uh, so the first thing, at least for me, that I feel like was the key to unlocking my prayer life was to being obedient. Mm-hmm. And he asked me to sell this other thing that business that I was a part of to step down from all the boards that I was a part of. Wow. That's drastic. To really, um, and it all happened pretty quickly, um, to really pull back on, did I really need to work that those many hours? Could I move it more into a regular schedule? And he has been so faithful through every one of those things. It was a, um, a grieving process because Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, I thought those things kind of defined me right? and made me feel good. And what I found was as those things were coming off that just these sweet relationships, like he kept, he was introducing me to different people and connecting me with these women of prayer. Mm -hmm. And I just found a joy that I've never felt. 
that's amazing. So when you started this season of kind of pruning back, did you have in mind that it was specifically so you could pray more or did, did that come after? No, I mean, no. I mean, what I recognized before he called me to pull back mm-hmm. is that I was definitely struggling with getting everything done in my life yeah. and feeling like I wasn't doing everything very well. And I, I did keep crying out to him, like, why don't I have deeper connections in the, in, with other mm-hmm. believers? Like, mm-hmm. almost dissatisfied with church. Like, it's just not, that's not enough, God. Like, I right. want real community. And mm-hmm. I want deeper relationship with you. And, and really, I mean, really pretty much what he told me is you don't have any space in your life. Right. So it was, it was not only did he, but he's just so, oh my gosh, he's so merciful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because, you know, the thing about being obedient that I found is that you know, when it's just, you're doing it with him and his mercy and his will, I just feel like he just, I'm not saying it wasn't painful, but there was just so much grace covering it. And, you know, just almost immediately having more space in my life for the things Mm -hmm. that happen. No, that's really neat. Yeah. So why is it, because I really resonate with what you were saying about how you just felt kind of spiritually lonely, like you're, you're doing church, you have Christian friends, but you're still lacking that deep, deep spiritual connection. And I feel like even if someone's not as crazy busy as you used to be, I feel like that resonates with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And why do you, why do you think that is? Why is this kind of sense of being spiritually isolated so prevalent, would you think? I think that's a really good question because almost every woman that I've connected with now was all feeling the same way. Mm-hmm. And they did not necessarily have the same circumstances, like you said, right, that I did. Right. Um, but almost everybody was craving that. Um, I think it's scary. <laughs> I think it's. I think. I think it requires vulnerability, and really stepping into being willing to open your heart to people. And most of us have been hurt by women in particular, um, or you know, women and men in relationship. I mean, we're all going to let each other down at some point, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess personally, I feel like there is a, I feel like there's a timing right now where there has been a lot of dryness for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe this is just my experience, but I am just hearing from so many people around the state that they are feeling this move of depth to go closer to God and closer to other believers that they haven't felt before. Mm -hmm. Um, I think part of what keeps us apart, you know, in our spiritual isolation is um, judgment, religion, and, um, you know, thinking that we're so different, you know, not Mm -hmm. looking at the outside stuff and not looking at the, so let me, let me rephrase that. So the people that I am really close to now in Christ Mm -hmm. are phenomenally different people than me. Uh You know, I mean, like personality wise, interest wise, politics wise. um, I mean, none of them do I, would I really have like resonated with, oh, this is the person I'm going to be a friend with. Right. Uh And God God even told me that because when I was praying, as I was going through that whole process, he was like, he was like, the the people that are the desire of your heart to be connected with are not going to be the people that you think. (laughs) I think Uh that happens. You know, we, we join a let's say a Bible study or a tea group mm-hmm. or a book group mm-hmm. thinking, Oh, I'm going to find like-minded people. But really it's praying into the Holy spirit and saying, God, who am I supposed to connect with? Mm-hmm. You know, bring people in my life that, that align with this, this deeper place that I want to go and highlight that person to me in church that I might think I have nothing in common with. Right. You know? let's say they're single and don't have kids and they're like 60 and uh, I have three kids and I'm 40. I think that's a big piece of it mm-hmm. it's just that we, we have these blinders of the world and mm-hmm. we let that separate uh, at least community wise. Yeah. So that, that's my, that's been my experience. So that's kind of where, where I see it. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I I do feel like this is a, if not quite universal, a very prevalent feeling, both of being spiritually isolated and craving 
you know, deeper connections. So would you agree there's part of me that wants to just throw out glib answers and be like, well, ideally you're going to get that sense of closeness from your, you know, your actual local church. Um, what are your thoughts on that? So, I mean, the interesting thing for me, and it's the same process. Um, so I, this was a painful experience for me. So I was, I was saved at Alliance Bible church mm -hmm. and, um, and really, you know, never thought that I would ever go anywhere else. I mean, I got mm -hmm. saved at 33 and it was like, you know, a small church. These people are my family. Mm -hmm. um, but gradually many, many things happened over a course of years. And I just, God just kept putting on my heart, like, yes, you're getting community there, but not what I've called for you. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we did leave and we went to a new church called heart of the city, which is the church I attend now. And I've been there for two and a half years and I have very few relationships there and mm -hmm. I don't feel particularly connected there. I don't feel like it's my family. And I've mm -hmm. talked about, about this a lot. Like, okay, I know I'm supposed to be here. Right. And, you know, I appreciate Sunday and I think it's, they're wonderful people and they're, they're doing great things for God. But I'm like, this just doesn't feel like that community family thing that I really was craving. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually feel like that is much more common than people that feel connected in. Yeah. And I mean, what he just kept showing me was that it's not about the church building. It's right. about the people that I connect you with that that I'm connecting you with for my purposes. That makes total sense. Yeah, I, I think more people feel like me about their churches than, than don't. I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. So I guess if someone listening does feel that about their own church, I mean, what, where would you recommend they go to? Like, do you recommend maybe try to deepen relationships in your own church? And if that doesn't work, expand your network out? Or do you feel like it just is a case by case? I mean, I think it all goes back to really praying and asking the Holy Spirit, you know, okay, who am I supposed to connect with? And mm -hmm. don't let my own blinders be on me of what I think that should look like. That's you know, so just, just, God, who am I supposed to be connecting with right now? Who are the people that that you are, you know, leading me towards this relationship with, and it could be in my church, and it could absolutely not be in my church, and somebody that I totally don't expect. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I think, I'm not sure I'm totally the right person to ask on this, because I'm, I'm not sure that part of my problem is that I didn't really get involved. You know, I didn't right. really, I kept myself more on that, that little bit surface level, mm -hmm. because I wasn't really feeling called to be involved. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I'm not, I'm not sure on that one if I was if I handled that right or not. Mm -hmm. um, I did what I felt was right, and right. then um, and then what ended up happening is at the same time that we were going to heart of the city, I joined a para ministry called Kingdom Alliance, mm -hmm. and that's where I really started to feel like community and being fed more like a church experience. Mm -hmm. It just seems like he's working so much now, not through the traditional methods. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying there's, a, I, I love church. I'm not saying, I mean, yeah, I'm I there. it's just, it seems like um, there's just so much happening, you know, in and out of churches in different levels than used to be, where it's not so structured in one area anymore. Yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. And, you know, I, I love that you spoke so honestly, because I do feel like so many women do feel isolated. And then you, you almost feel guilty for feeling isolated, because like, well, maybe I'm not doing enough. Maybe I'm not involved enough. Um, one last quick question. I'm just curious how you would address the people who might be listening and saying, wow, you know, your prayer group sounds amazing, but kind of, you know, like if a year ago, you were to have someone say, hey, do you want to join this prayer group? We meet for an hour every evening. You know, like think about your objections. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no way. Yeah. So how would you, now that you're on the other side of that, how would you address people who have those kinds of, well, I, I don't have time for that. Yeah, I would, oh my gosh, if I could go back 10 years <laughs> and tell myself 10 years ago that, oh my gosh, that this would be the most life-changing thing since me getting saved. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
we know that God changes things through prayer. We know that, that, you know, the time we spent for him is eternal and it's for the king. Like we know the stuff in our head, yeah. but then, you know, the world presents it. So there's just so many different options. So I guess what I would say is two things. It, just talking to myself is I would have mercy and grace for myself for mm-hmm. just being a mom that was trying to raise three right. kids, teenagers and doing the best that I could. And, um, you know, doing about as much as I felt like I could handle. Right. So I think part of it is just, we need to have more mercy and grace on ourselves and not feel like, Oh my gosh, we need to like go and add on other things and Mm -hmm. and just to be a good Christian or whatever. Right. But the other piece that I would, that I would say to myself is I would very firmly say to myself or to anyone who's in that situation, um, is there stuff that you really could move out of the way mm-hmm. to make room, make more room for God, because that is, I, I'm, that's the desire of all of our hearts. Right. We want more of that. We know that's the stuff that really makes us feel joyful, but usually it's stuff in the way, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it's just other things that we feel like we have to do. Um, and now that I look back on those things I thought I had to do, I'm like, it doesn't even compare. It's like, oh my gosh, why would I spend time on that when I could have been doing this? Mm -hmm. And and just the the fruit that you get from something like this is beyond anything you could do in the world, really. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and I like how you guys have it set up so that, you know, each person's in charge. So, you know, you're going to be there at least one night a week. And you also know that you don't have to commit to every single night. I can see that could be a recipe for, <laughs> yeah. for burnout or overwhelm. Absolutely. Like yeah. And we did take a couple of days. It was really interesting. We took a couple of days break around Christmas uh-huh. and our plan was to take a week off um, right around that time. Just, you know, people's schedules during Christmas and stuff, but everybody missed each other so much uh-huh. that after like two days, we were like spontaneously calling and praying with each other. Oh, that's hilarious. And, um, but I really do feel like it can't, it can't be about obligation at all. Like it just, it has to come from that deep desire of wanting more of that. And then just listening to God and maybe he says, okay, well now's not the right time. Right. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if if he is calling and it is the right time, then I think the next question is, okay, God, well, what is it that, what is it that I need to let go of to Mm -hmm. embrace you more fully? Yeah. No, that's great. Okay. So if someone was perhaps interested in joining your group, um, is that something that you guys are open to? I know I'd love to poke in from time to time. Yeah, I would love you to. And yeah, absolutely. It's, it's Alaska Prayer Hub on Facebook. And, okay. Um, if you just look that up, I think we've got about two or 300 members, I think at this point. Wow. And, and like I said, it's really a, a core of maybe like 10 to 15 people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's absolutely welcoming. And I mean, my prayer of my heart is that, um, that, you know, more and more communities like that, and I'm sure there's many others that exist, mm-hmm. um, but just, you know, it doesn't have to look the same, but right. perhaps somebody will come in and, and God will show them, okay, here's part of what I want you to take and start mm-hmm. with your own community, or they feel like they feel like they fit into this and they want to continue with that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I think that's so exciting. I love the idea of hub too. You know, it's a picture of, you know, little hubs popping up all over. That's yeah, not, I do too. So very cool. But although, you know, I, I guess if it's going until 9 7 p.m. in Alaska, that's pretty late for people out on the East Coast. But, yeah. You know, maybe if you're a night owl, this would be perfect for you. Yeah. yeah. So, and I've traveled, I traveled during the time of, of doing it to Dallas and uh-huh. in- night. So that's, it's a little tough. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> well, Jennifer, thank you. It is so fun. I have always really enjoyed just connecting with you, hearing your heart, talking about prayer, which, you know, we obviously both have a heart for. Um, so yeah, thank you for taking this time to talk with me, to talk with us, to give us some of your encouragement. Absolutely. And thank you so much for doing this. Um, I think the podcast and idea and just that encouragement, I think it's a way 
I think it's a way for us to go deeper. And I'm so glad you're doing this. Oh, thanks so much. Well, have a wonderful day and we will talk to you later. Thank you. Bless you. Bye.